Now let's take a look at the Compass Demo LabVIEW project. Here I have the PMOD Compass module wired up to MXP Connector A. Compass Demo is running right now. Here we see the six data bytes retrieved from the three-axis compass. Here I have the formatted values as signed integers. On the waveform chart, you can use the color coding to look at the X, Y, and Z axes. At this point, I'll pick up the compass, start moving it around a little bit, tilting it this way and that. And my goal now involves looking at this chart and trying to get it set up so X is a maximum value and Y and Z are both zero. At this point, the X axis of the board is parallel with the Earth's magnetic field. Okay, I'm moving the board again. Now what I'm looking for is a maximum absolute value on the z-axis and also trying to get x and y to go to zero. At this point, the board is normal to the Earth's field line, which is about 60 to 7 degrees at my location. That angle varies depending on where you happen to be. At this point, I'm placing the board parallel to the ground on the lab bench. It's level rotating the board, looking at the red trace, which is the x-axis, seeking a relative maximum value for x. At this point then, the right side of the board points to magnetic north. All right, let me set the board aside and let's take a look at the block diagram details. There's three main parts. This is the initialization and configuration of the PMOD compass board. The main loop is involved with polling the data ready signal and then when that's asserted, reading the values from the compass and displaying those values in the front panel. And then third part is finishing up with a MyRio reset. We have three configuration registers for this Honeywell compass. I have the details from the data sheet listed out right here. You have individual bit fields that you can play with. This is, for example, the data output rate, presently set to 15 Hz. If I wanted to set up 75 Hz, simply change that bit field code to 110. Rerun, I'll have to save first, but rerun the VI wait for it to deploy and sure enough we see that the update rate is considerably faster than it was before. I'll go ahead and clear that bit and get it ready to return to the original 15 Hertz data rate. Note that all of the unboxed bits must remain zero. For example these that I'm indicating right here. Again the data sheet indicates that those values must be zero at all times. I'm using the reverse 1D array to deal with the fact that LabVIEW would call this bit right here the least significant bit, but the way I'd like to view this to be consistent with the data sheet, I want to view the other side as the least significant bit. And so reversing the array takes care of that. That Boolean array then can be converted to a, an unsigned integer, and we do that with Boolean array to number. That's located right there. To make sure that it's the proper data type, I will make certain that it's converted to an unsigned 8-bit integer. Now each of those three values from the registers is fed to a build array node, and then I begin that with the address of the first configuration register, which is address 0. Here's my address for the device. And then my first call to the I2C interface is located here with the Express VI. I'm presently selecting the I2C interface on connector A, and this is just write only. And I'm doing so at the standard mode of 100 kilobits per second. So this first call to the Express VI writes out those four configuration values to the PMOD compass board. Now, for my main loop, I'm using a timed loop, 1 MHz clock with a 50 microsecond period. And this is fast enough to accommodate the fact that the data ready 
signal is a relatively short pulse. Here I'm monitoring the data ready signal on the data IO or DIO input number zero. This is an active low signal. That's why I have the inverter right here. At this point, I have a case structure and it's based on that Boolean signal. So I have the true and false cases. When the signal is not active, we simply pass the cluster right through the air cluster. But if it is true, then we need to do a little bit of steps to retrieve the data. So I write the address of the first data register. I need to convert that to an array, even though it's only a single element. And then I'm using the read write version of the I2C Express VI to read six bytes. Those bytes then are presented in this array indicator on the front panel. Then I can use index array and join numbers to grab pairs of output bytes and join those together into a 16-bit word. Here's join numbers right there. Once that's a 16-bit word, I cast that into a 16-bit integer and display it right here. Should note that that's a signed integer, so that's the I16 data type. Now here I'm sending the same signal for that X indicator to the waveform chart display. Note that Z comes after X and before Y. So I'm ordering this as X, Y, and Z. And these values are displayed back here on the chart. A couple of options you might be aware, want to be aware of. You can adjust the number of points that are saved for the chart history. And you can also export the chart to either the clipboard or Excel or perhaps a simplified image. All right, finishing up here, let's take a look at propagating the air cluster. Goes into the loop. Keep that through the case structure. On this side, then the air cluster is ORed together with the stop button. Either pressing the stop or an air condition breaks you out of the loop, pass through the simple air handler, and finally execute a MyRio reset.